right, I'm now here with Philip Hurst. Um, you just told an interesting talk about uh, doping and placebo. Uh, how about yourself? Yourself as a researcher, what are your topics that you are working on? Yeah, so I look into the placebo effect on sport and exercise outcomes. Mm -hmm. So generally looking to make athletes run faster, lift stronger weights. And on the other side to that, I look at educating athletes um, about anti-doping or doping in sport, uh, looking at the integrity and protecting their health against um, certain, certain elements. Yeah. Maybe um, just a last question about your own work then. Um, what are maybe uh, your next projects that are coming on? Yeah, so just written a book on placebo effects on sport and exercise. So we brought together myself and Chris Beedy have uh, edited this book with 15 chapters related to placebo effects in sport. Everything from what it is, what the mechanisms are, how we potentially use it, the the ethical natures of it, of it in sport and exercise science. So that's been a fun project to do. And what else we've been sort of looking into is the what COVID pushed onto us mm -hmm. was the lack of social interaction. So as a sport and exercise science, we'd often have people into the labs working at a high standard with a VO2 max test or running flat out. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do that anymore for obvious reasons. So what we did during COVID was do things online. And I don't know if things like, uh, if you're aware of things like Zwift, where you're exercising virtually in a virtual environment. And we were trying to manipulate athletes' expectations with placebos during that environment. And what we found was no placebo effects, mm. nothing. And whether that highlights the importance of a social interaction mm -hmm. with any intervention that you give, mm -hmm probably becomes so, so important. So that's kind of where I might want to take the research in the next couple of years as well. Well, that's super interesting. I didn't know about the book, but I will definitely <laughs> check it out. <laughs> um, wasn't there another, um, another talk today where, um, I don't know uh, who, who it was, but I think she talked also about the placebo effects in online um, therapy sessions. And her point was that um, they were quite the same than in a real person environment. Um, did you did you maybe saw it? Yeah. So the way we did it, we used uh, it was called the beetroot juice shot. Don't know if you've uh, come across that before. And we we did a balanced placebo design. So balanced placebo design is when you give the drug, and the person knows about it in one trial. The other trial is you get given a placebo and you're told it's the drug. Third trial, you get given the drug but you're told it's placebo. And the fourth trial, you get told it's placebo and you get given the placebo. And in that instance, we would just send the beetroot juice, in this case, in the post. The athlete would then collect it, drink it, and had no interaction uh, with us as a research team, just in terms of the information you got on an email. So whether that is going to have implications in terms of how, I suppose, physiotherapy or any sort of programming is put in place for someone. So you go to the, for one session for a physiotherapist, you see them in person, and then you say, all right, I'm going to give you this six-week program see you later mm -hmm. is it better to have them in weekly on a, on, a so, on, a, on a social basis where you can just see the improvements or is it going to get to the stage where things are just getting done online um so i may be with the differences between the two so being online versus be, being in person it should, it's the same um not quite sure if it's because of the interaction is still there I think if you remove that, you possibly don't get as uh, big an effect. And that has been shown a lot with Fabrizio Benedetti's work on providing a treatment in person than through a machine. You get a bigger effect with person. Yeah, that sounds um, quite reasonable. Uh, makes sense. Uh, super interesting. Uh, we just talked about it a little bit before. Um, that we are looking mainly into physiotherapy and you just told us that you have quite some experience with physiotherapy yourself. Um, for you as a placebo researcher, so to say, um, and your experience with physiotherapy, how did your current knowledge about placebo and placebo effects change maybe retrospectively your experience with physiotherapy? Can you elaborate on this, little, on this a little bit? Yeah. yeah, definitely. So I used to run for Great Britain, uh, run at the European Championships. So I was at quite a high level as an, as an athlete, training all the time. And because of constantly the pressures, the stress I would put on my body, I would often go to a physiotherapist pretty much every week. And that was, yeah, for a couple of years I did that. Now I'd seen so many physiotherapists before that and I would often see them one off at a time or a couple of times, but never really felt like it was something that I would want to go back to until I found the physiotherapist that I really enjoyed. And it was the relationship that I was able to have with him who was quite similar minded, understood my 
goals as an athlete, understood that I might be in pain sometimes. It's okay to push through that pain in a safe manner. And he gave me confidence. I trusted in what he said. And um, yeah, it was just a, a better relationship that I had with him as a physiotherapist, which I thought was so important. So if I consider my own research, when you think about the placebo effect and how that relationship and that trust that you have with someone is incredibly important. Whether that's something that's taught when you're learning as a physiotherapist, I'm not quite sure. So for me, it really highlighted that, um, yeah, working with people, they're not, pa they're not just patients or subjects, you're working with people. So that's what I loved about uh, my physiotherapist. I think the work that you're gonna be doing and trying to promote, the, uh, the, I suppose, the con enhancing the contextual factors of your treatment. You know, you could have the greatest knowledge as a physiotherapist, but it's those relationships that you have with uh, your, your the people, the patients, it's probably the most important thing alongside your knowledge.